Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is name. N-A-M-E. Rally. You bet your life. The more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers of America present Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz series produced and transcribed from Hollywood. And here he is, the one, the only... What a ridiculous name. Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples. Groucho, we invited some girls from a department store to the program tonight. At about time. <laughs> and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected uh, Miss Margaret Myers. Her partner, Clem Swartz, has an interesting occupation. And uh, here they come now, folks, come on in to meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome, youngsters. Welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers. And if you say the secret word, you'll divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Let's see now. Miss Margaret uh, Myers, huh? You work in a department store, is that right? Yes, I do. Hmm. Well, where are you from originally? I'm from Stewart, Nebraska. What department store are you uh, Broadway laboring Broadway Hollywood. Under? What's that? Broadway Hollywood. You work at the Broadway Hollywood? Yes, I do. Huh? Well... Really, that, that store carries prettier merchandise than I realized. <laughs> I'll have a go at it someday. Uh. And you're Mr. Clem uh, Schwartz, huh? Yes, sir, that's... Is that right, how you pronounce right. it, Schwartz? Yes, sir. You say yes at anything, I can see that. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Clem? Clemmy? Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. <laughs> Come again? Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. I don't care what you broke, I ask you where you're from. <laughs> Now, Clem, uh, Fenneman says that you have an interesting occupation. Just, uh, what do you do? Well, sir, I'm a rodeo rider. You're a radio rider? Rodeo. What show are you on, the March of Time? <laughs> well, no, sir. What kind of a radio rider? Uh, a rodeo rider, do you know? Oh, a rodeo rider. <laughs> well, that's well, a horse you... of a different color, huh? How did you happen to get into uh, that kind of a job? Well, sir, I was raised back home on the ranch, and... All the boys that I knew, you know, they rode the old for a living. And golly, you know, it's a lot better deal of doing that than it is working for a living. <laughs> well, it makes a lot of sense, Clem. It makes horse sense, as a matter of fact. Now, let's go shopping in your store. Uh, what kind of, uh, Margaret, uh, what do you do there? I work in the notions department. Well, what is a notion? I, I've seen that word many times, but uh, just what, is, what does it mean? Well, it's, well, it's a notion, whatever you get a notion to have. It's hard to describe. Well, some of the notions I have, you're saying you couldn't buy in a department store. Do <laughs> you have any headaches in a job like that? Oh, yes, lots of them. Like what? Oh, for one thing, we can't get enough girls in our department. Yeah, well, I've had that complaint, too. I'm really <laughs> you too, Clem? Oh, gosh, yeah. I should imagine you do right well, Clem. But that's just about all I do, I reckon. Is it much? You haven't, you haven't got a girl out here, Clem? Oh, gosh, no, I couldn't find one in all these people out here. They're city folks, you know. You mean city folks don't have girls? Is that what you're implying? Well, the, the city boys has already got them, if you know what I mean. <laughs> How about down there in Cadiddle Hopper, where you were born? Is that the name of it? Well, How about that? Did you have a girl down there? Yeah, I had one down there. And is that why you came up here? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, not hardly. Well, do you, uh, did, is she uh, pining for you down there in the middle of the road, the highway? Or? Well, she might be, but I don't hardly think so. Now, I'm fixing to get a new one if I get the right kind of an opportunity, you know. Yeah. Well, what would you regard as a likely opportunity? Well, shucks, I reckon just one that wasn't married. <laughs> Clem, your standards are too high. (laughs) 
Now, just one minute. You're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the $2,000 question. Right now, I want you to pay close attention to some mighty interesting information. Have you seen, have you driven the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8? It's America's most spectacular new car. Featuring the revolutionary new DeSoto 160-horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine that's the talk of the engineering world. What a thrill when you get behind the wheel of the new DeSoto. When you feel a tremendous surging power, the instant acceleration at your command at all speeds. Because DeSoto's new 160-horsepower Fire Dome V8 engine is America's most powerful engine design. Its unique dome-shaped combustion chambers produce more power from every drop of gas and on regular gasoline. Not only that, the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8 also brings you amazing new power steering so that even in parking, when your car is at a standstill, you can turn the steering wheel with one finger. Yes, as easy as dialing a phone. Tomorrow, go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealers and see and drive the new 160-horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome 8. America's most spectacular new car. Uh, by the way, congratulations. Congratulations, gentlemen. You know, George was voted the best announcer in television by 1,500 newspaper editors in the recent Fame poll. And that is the real poll. And I was delighted to find out that you uh, won this, uh, George. And I hope that you don't try to strike us for more money. That's all. <laughs> now, here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. You selected songs about animals as your category. How much of the $20 are you going to bet? Well, I, I think about $16. I reckon that'll be a plenty one. <laughs> $16. Well, okay. Give me the title of this animal song. Play, Jerry. Pop goes the weasel. Pop goes the weasel is right. Well, you're off to a good start. You have thirty-six dollars. You remember you're going for two thousand dollars tonight. Now, how much of the thirty-six will you bet this time? Thirty-five, I reckon. Thirty-five, he reckons. He does more reckoning without ever adding. <laughs> All right, play, Jerry. All right, Willie. Well, what is it? No, uh, the whistler and his dog. You now have one dollar. You have one dollar. How much you reckon you're going to bet this time, Clem? <laughs> well, then, of course, we get down low, aren't we? <laughs> Let's just bet fifty cents. Fifty cents a little. Fifty. Fifty cents. Let's see if you can identify this animal song. Play, Jerry. You now have one dollar and fifty cents. And here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to reckon? Oh, that's not well, at all. Chuck, let's say just a little bit. Let's okay. Little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. One minute. A dollar and forty-eight cents. You're going to bet a dollar forty-eight, eh? <laughs> He's reckoning us, and we're wrecking him. <laughs> All right, here we go for a dollar forty-eight. Play. Gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. Oh, gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. And you'll wind up with two dollars and ninety-eight cents. <laughs> Nobody leaves here with two dollars and ninety-eight cents. I'm going to give you one more question, get it right, and we bring your winnings up to twenty-five bucks. You ready? How long do you cook a three-minute egg? <laughs> Three minutes is right. <laughs> We uh, have a housewife for you now, Groucho, Mrs. Marsha Lester. She was picked from our studio audience just before we went on the air. Her partner is a special guest, a member of the Los Angeles City Council, Mr. Kenneth Hahn. And here they are, folks. Meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, kids, to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Uh, Mrs. Marsha Lester and Councilman Kenneth Hahn, eh? Oh, come now. Are you, are you really a councilman? 
Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Can't be. You've got your hands in your own pockets. <laughs> I apologize, Mr. Hearn. Uh, I didn't really mean that. It, it just slipped out. Uh... <laughs> Would you ignore what I just said? Certainly, certainly. He's a politician, all right. <laughs> He'll ignore anything we voters have to say. <laughs> Mrs. Marsha Lester, uh, you're the housewife, huh? <laughs> yes. I'll call you Marsha, and you can call me Mallow. <laughs> How'd you meet your husband? Well, I was coming out of the May Company just loaded with packages. You were, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... I hope you didn't get stuck in a revolving door. <laughs> bad. I, I slipped, and it was raining, and I was trying to hold my little umbrella, and I pulled my husband down, an innocent bystander, with me. And that's how we met. He helped me up, and he's been helping me ever since. <laughs> Sounds like a real romance. They fell for each other, and... <laughs> the month of May. Oh, no, that was a department store. <laughs> Mr. Kenneth Hahn, you're a councilman, eh? I find it very stimulating talking to a councilman. Can you fix a traffic ticket? Uh, no, I uh, got you. Well, I don't see any point in continuing this conversation. <laughs> I can't keep calling you Mr. Hahn, a young, fine-looking fellow like you, a councilman. What, what shall I call you? My friends call me Kenny. Incredible. A man in public office who still has friends? <laughs> Why, he's on Kenny. <laughs> how old are you, Ken? Thirty-one. Thirty-one, huh? And how long have you been in office? I've been in office five years. I imagine you've had some interesting experiences with your constituents. Do you remember any hot ones that you could relate? Well, just a week or so ago, a lady called me at my home at 10.30 at night. Are you married? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so she called me at 10.30 at night. Got Where was your wife? My wife was uh, in bed. <laughs> well, where were you? I was in bed, too, and the phone was ringing. So I jumped up to answer it. I thought it was some kind of emergency call. Well, she... What kind of an emergency call get a politician get? Oh, we get them plenty of calls, Groucho. How does that sound? People are in trouble or in jail or they they got a house is burning or they want somebody to go to the, to the hospital. Half the time they call a, call a councilman instead of calling the right departments. So anyway, this lady calls me and says... Uh, oh, you're not going to let me horn in on this at all. <laughs> going to wind up being governor. <laughs> then you've got to chase those grunion, you know that. Right? <laughs> a lot of fun to do. So anyway, she's, she called me. you got a daughter named Honey Bear? <laughs> oh, I have a son. I have another. Well, call him Honey Bear. <laughs> Can't be elected unless you have a child named Honey Bear. Well, I'll call the next one Honey Bear. Okay. That's a promise now. <laughs> so she calls me at 10.30 at night. She said that the garbage... It's about 11 now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> She said... Uh, on with the story. All right, on with the story. And the torpedoes. She said the garbage man forgot to pick up her garbage for two consecutive t times. She said she lives in a four-family flat, that her garbage pail is full, her neighbors are full, and she's used it in the dish pan. She's got all the dishes and her husband's mad at her. She wanted me to do something about it. So... Uh, I called her for emergency truck to uh, see what they could do to help this, this lady out. Well, the next morning, they, they went by about midnight, I imagine, picked up the garbage. The next morning, I, she woke me. She was at the door about 7.30. Oh, I mean, wait a minute. Cross that out. She woke me about 6.30. I'm always up early. And, uh... I'm letting him hang himself now. I know. I know. At 6.30. You notice I don't say anything anymore. <laughs> You're riding alone, Councilman. Uh, I'm afraid of that. That's... So she said, Mr. Hahn, she says, I'll always vote for you. She said, that was just wonderful for you to come out last night and pick up the garbage yourself. <laughs> I just want to know, where did you put it? And uh, how'd you get it in your car? She says, if you, if you know where to do it, she says, uh, or, or she said, if you know how to get rid of the garbage, she says, maybe next time I can do it. <laughs> Well, Ken, I've been standing here taking pot shots at you, and I think it's only democratic to give you a chance to do the same. You're at liberty to say anything you want. Well, uh, since this is election year, I won't say too much except this, Groucho. Sincerely, that you are contributing a great deal to the welfare of our country. You're making millions of people laugh. I well, think you're doing a great deal for our, our, our country.
Well, that's very flattering. And next election, I'll run to the polls and vote for you. Is that okay? <laughs> but you don't live in my district, do you? Well, don't let that stop you. <laughs> well, I've kidded you, you, Mr. Hahn, but it was only in jest. And if you really want to find out what the people are thinking about it, you should take a look at the new DeSoto Fire Dome 8. Will you take a look at it? For I me? will, Sorry. tomorrow morning. Not too early. Huh? <laughs> now you're going to play your bet your life. You beat our other couples, and you'll get a chance at the $2,000 question. I can't tell you how much you have to win, but uh, George is going to remind our listeners. Clem and his partner won $2.98, and the secret word is name. All right, now, now here we go. Let's see how I can build you $20. You selected initials of government organizations. Here's your first question. How much of the 20 will you go for? 18. 18. Is that all right with you, Miss Mallow? Fine. She said you just... Oh. What? <laughs> what do the initials RFC stand for? Reconstruction Finance Corporation. Absolutely right. <laughs> And you're off to a good start with $38. I'm going for $2,000 tonight. How much of the 38 are you going to risk? Talk up. Talk up, Marshall. Let's hear you. 37. 37. The initials AEC stand for an important government group. What do these initials stand for? Atomic Energy Commission. You're absolutely right. <laughs> you now have $75. Thought I was bright enough to get out of politics. <laughs> Here's your third question. How much of the 78 are you going to bet? 75. 75. 74. 74. What do the initials TBA stand for? Tennessee Valley Authority. Absolutely correct. <laughs> you now have $149. You're crazy. No, 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 run for mayor. <laughs> You're crazy if you do. Now, here's, here's your last chance to beat the other couple. How much of the 149? All of it. All of it. All of it. All of it. The initials VA stand for an important government group. What do these initials stand for? Veterans Administration. All right. <laughs> You'll be wound up with $298. Well, for thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. We uh, have a school teacher and a telephone operator for you now, Groucho. Mr. Uh, Robert Crawford is the teacher, and Miss Virginia Ryan is the operator, chosen by our studio audience just before we went in the air, and here they are. Splendid. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. Well, welcome. Welcome to, to the DeSoto to Plymouth Dealer. Deal. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Miss uh, Virginia Ryan, and, uh, you're a telephone operator, is that yes, right? Yes, sir. Where are you from, Virginia? I tell no, I do Are you married? No. No. Oh. That's terrible, a telephone girl without a ring. <laughs> well, I'll have to put it in a plug for you sometime, huh? <laughs> how is it, uh, how come you're not married? Let's get colloquial over here. Huh? Well, I'm not in any hurry. She's a telephone operator, all right. <laughs> <laughs> but if I asked her for, for a date, she'd give me the busy signal. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Robert Crawford, that's you, huh? Right. You look like, like Francis Weimer, the fellow who used to be golf champion. Anybody ever tell you that? No. Are you married? Uh, yes, I'm married. How did you meet your wife? Uh, I don't think that's worth uh, discussing. <laughs> well, I think every married man feels that way about it. <laughs> Nevertheless, we're very persistent here. How did you meet her? Well, uh, to be truthful, I was coaching a uh, basketball team in a seven-state tournament. You were coaching basketball? Co coaching basketball. Were you dribbling or drooling? <laughs> a little of both, I imagine. What do you, what do you teach? Uh, I teach uh, uh, some math courses. I'm head of the mathematics department. Oh, say you. Quite a fellow here, eh? Basketball and mathematics, huh? What should I call a math teacher? You have a pretty dignified position, and I can't call you Robbie. Uh, what shall I call you? Well, uh... For about 12 years, my students have been calling me Uncle Fudd. <laughs> That's quite dignified, huh? Where do you teach, Fudd? Uh, no, Santa Monica teach? High School. You don't teach, Fudd. I mean, where do you teach, Fudd? <laughs> it's not getting any clearer. I teach at Santa Monica. Fudd, where do you teach? <laughs> I'll turn this thing around. Uh, I teach at Santa Monica High School. Oh, well, what are some of the subjects you teach these uh, innocent children? Well, you see, uh, some of the students are planning to go to college. And uh, 
That's the group that I teach, the upper group. I teach in college algebra, solid geometry, trigonometry. Well, tell us about college uh, algebra. What is that like? I think it'd be more logical if I told you about high school algebra first. <laughs> That's not quite true. It'd be more logical if you first told me about kindergarten algebra. <laughs> Do you have any tricks for cramming mathematics uh, down these unsuspecting little gullets? Well, I think I do. Uh, most of the teachers use X's and Y's and Z's, but I have uh, three little characters that I use, which I call <coughs> hmm, which is a uh, circle, and ha, which hmm is... Hmm is a circle? Hmm is a circle. Well, I never knew that. Huh? Well, you think in them. And, and then we have ha... I don't think in circles now. You've got me wrong. <laughs> ha is a square... Yes, that's me, all right. <laughs> and a character I called, which is a diamond. And I use these to solve equations. Could you give us a sample equation just so this would uh, clarify itself in my mind? Well, uh, for example, the solution of a quadratic with these characters as coefficients would be uh, x is equal to uh, a minus half plus or minus the square root of half squared minus four hmms all over two hmms. <laughs> all right. The original quadratic was... Uh, Hmm, x squared plus ha x plus z equals zero. Well, tell us something about basketball. <laughs> well, I've learned a lot uh, tonight, and I'll probably get a bill from the phone company for all this extra conversation. Even talk isn't cheap anymore. <laughs> now you're going to play your bet your life for a chance at the DeSoto Plymouth two thousand dollar question. All you got to do is run your twenty dollars into more than our other couples. Can't tell you how much you have to win, but George is going to remind our listeners. Councilman Hahn and his partner lead with $298. Oh, I have a note here uh, to remind me to tell you something. A good friend of mine, S.J. Perelman, has written a slanderous piece about me in the new issue of Holiday Magazine. I think you'll like it. You'll find it in the April issue of Holiday. He's a wonderful writer, and even if you don't like the subject matter, I think you'll be crazy about it. <laughs> now then we play the, uh, the quiz. All right, here we go. Let's see how high I can bet you $20. You selected husband and wife teams of radio and television. Here's your first question. How much of $20 will you bet and talk out loud? $19.52. Here we go. <laughs> One of the most popular husband and wife teams in radio actually used their own kids, Ricky and David, on their program. What is the name of this couple? Ozzy and Harriet. Ozzy and Harriet is right. <laughs> You're off to a good start. You have $39.52. By the way, I saw them in their new movie, uh, Here Come the Nelsons, the other night, and it, it's real, George. For you squares in the audience, that means very good, and I uh, recommend that you go see it. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. Now, how much of the $39.52 are you going to bet this time? $39? I'll be fine. Oh, make it tough on yourself. You're a math teacher. $39.08.50. and two mils. <laughs> And don't forget, the mills of the gods grind slowly. <laughs> but they grind exceeding fine. Now, what's he going to bet? How much are you going to bet? <laughs> don't let him talk you out of it now. 30, but... $39.40 and two mills. That's right. This man is allegedly a, a graduate of the University of San Francisco. He ought to know that. 402. All right, here we go. Who play the title roles in the Halls of Ivy? Uh, Ronald Coleman and his wife... Benita. Benita, Benita Coleman, that's Benita. close enough. We'll give you that. <laughs> I have oh, a... Just a moment. How much have you got? What? Thirty-nine. <laughs> 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 78.92.2. Exactly what I have. <laughs> and I had it right on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> All right, what is the name of the couple who live in... Uh, how much you bet? Oh, uh, we will bet... Uh, Seventy-eight dollars and ninety cents. And no sun teams. Uh, and that's and th good. And three pesos. Huh? And three pesos. <laughs> All right. What is the name of the couple who live in Whistville Vista? River McGee and Molly. River McGee and Molly. <laughs> Just a moment. How much do they got, Bud? Oh, let's see. I lost track. All right. I've we got it. <laughs> You have $157.82 in two of those mills. Now they got four mills. Now they got the Mills Brothers. All right, it's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much are you going to bet? We'll bet $157.81. Okay. I Love Lucy stars a husband and wife team. What are their names? Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> 
your question. You wind up with $315.63, two mills, and that means that you two, in just one minute, get the chance at the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. Attention all car owners. Now is the time to get your car ready for warmer weather. Now is the time to drive in at the famous sign of better service, your DeSoto Plymouth dealers, and ask for a springtime live-action tune-up. First of all, the DeSoto Plymouth dealers' expert mechanics will go over the engine of your car, adjusting the carburetor, distributor, and timing, cleaning and regapping the spark plugs, cleaning and servicing the air cleaners. This will mean new pep to your car and more miles to the gallon. Your DeSoto Plymouth dealer will see to it that your car is properly lubricated to factory specifications and the engine oil changed, as well as transmission and differential lubricants. Your car's electrical system will be checked after the heavy load of winter. The cooling system, too, will be put in shape for the extra miles of warmer weather driving. So, for extra power, extra economy, extra satisfaction, tomorrow, take your car for that springtime live-action tune-up. Take it where you see the famous sign of better service, the friendly sign of a DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And here comes the school teacher and the telephone operator, the winning couple all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $2,000 question. All right, here we go for $2,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully and please no help in the audience. Ready? One of the most dramatic episodes of World War II occurred in December 1939 when a German pocket battleship was scuttled and burned off the coast of Uruguay. For $2,000, what was the name of this ship? What is the answer you two have decided upon? The closest we can say is the Schornhorst. No, I'm sorry. It's the Graf Spee, I guess. Oh. Uh, S-P-E-E. That, the Graf Spee is the correct answer, so that means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Well, you lost the big money, but uh, how much did they win the quiz, George? $315.63. Congratulations, and thanks to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. Thank you. Thank you. next Wednesday night at the same time for the Groucho Marx Show, when the big question will be worth $2,500. And don't miss Groucho's television show, also presented by the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers of America. And remember, all dealers who sell DeSoto also sell Plymouth. Two great cars, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. And when you drive in, tell them Groucho sent you. Good night, folks, and remember, see DeSoto Fire Domain tomorrow. Folks, here's a reminder from the National Safety Council. The three R's of safe driving are ready, reasonable, right. You Bet Your Life, transcribed from Hollywood, is produced by John Goodell, directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith, music by Jerry Fielding. This is George Fenneman signing off for the more than 3,000 DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast. (laughs) 